Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and I am so grateful that you've taken time out of your busy day to spend some here with us. I'm so grateful to be joined by my dear client, Josh. We've worked together over the years on various application processes, advancing each time toward the kind of life and opportunities that Josh wants for himself. Hi, Josh. Thank you so much for joining me today on the podcast. I am so excited to have you here. And I'm really happy to be here. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Josh. So let's start by giving our listeners a bit of insight into who you are and how you came to this place, how you got here. So could you just provide us with a bit of background about yourself? Yeah, sure. I mean, I was in my undergraduate degree when I first met Adrian. I was looking to see if I could do something after my undergraduate degree just to improve my career opportunities and such. And it was a really intimidating kind of process from what it seemed like. And I just want some help. And I, I called up Adrian to, to help me out. with. Yes, you did. And so you, at the time, were in what type of undergrad program? So I was at the University of Toronto. I was studying political science. It was a Bachelor of Arts program. And I think I was in my third or fourth year when I started the process for the, the graduate degree. Yes. Yeah. And and so just to give us all sort of a window ahead into what you're doing now, could you just tell us a bit about what you're doing professionally now? Oh, for sure. OK, so, yeah, that's a bit of my background. Of course, I studied political science and right now I work in politics for a minister in the provincial government. So it's definitely uh, what I studied. And yeah, I'm doing exactly that. And it's it's been great so far. So I'm enjoying that a lot. Yeah. The thing that I I'm so excited about for you is that you're working in the field that you studied in that you wanted to be in. And that is like the creme de la creme. Like this is what we want, right? We want to have your journey begin in a place that you actually enjoy. And the thing that I think is so important about the way that you began your journey, even before we met, is that you chose a program that you actually enjoyed. Absolutely. Like, that was so important to me to be able to work in this field after school and to obviously get a great job in it. And so that's why I, I you know, I chose the program that I did. And I think it, it really benefited me to have that graduate degree before working. It allowed me to study a lot, learn a lot before getting into government and working. And it was super beneficial. And now I'm doing exactly what I want to do. I, I love it. So it's been super fun so far. And yeah, I just want to keep keep doing that. Yes. And, you know, I can actually tell that you love it because, as I said, we've known each other for quite a few years now. We've worked together over the course of a few years and I have seen such a, a change, such a shift in even the way that you carry yourself. I have to tell you, and it is so fulfilling and so rewarding for me to see that because I can tell that you're actually enjoying what you're doing and coming out sort of on the other side of the applications journey, you're you're really advanced. You're really excelling. You're still advancing. And so I think that that is so important and so wonderful for me to see. So your path, though, was not linear, right? No, 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 no. Yeah, right. <laughs> Lots of ups and downs. <laughs> yeah. And, and so let's talk about some of the challenges, because I know that there were some challenges that you faced along the way. Could you share a little bit about that? Well, it's just I did get into political science in university, but I didn't actually know I was going to be working in politics and I didn't actually know what I was going to do. So there was a problem with a certain lack of direction and that definitely affected me. You know, you want to be able to know where you're going in life and you want to have a clear objective. And that makes your days a lot easier because it makes doing the hard things every day, like studying, et cetera, you know, worth it. Because you're, you're moving towards something. So I think that was definitely a challenge, uh, especially for a few years, quite frankly. You know, right now, when you do work 
in a, a great environment and you really enjoy the job and the people that you're with, it, it just makes your life so much better. So you say, I'm, I've, I look like I'm feeling a bit better. And yeah, that's true because right now there is kind of that objective every day that I'm going towards. And I do feel like I have more of a direction. And so, so yeah, that's why I'm, I'm feeling a bit better, Adrian. I, I appreciate that you saw that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's so important to, to give you credit where it's due, right? Like you have done this hard work to get here. You're not done advancing yet. We're never done advancing, but you've done so much hard work to get to where you are. And I just think that we have to acknowledge it. You're too kind. I, I do. <laughs> look, I've done, I've done some work, but I don't, and I appreciate that. And I guess you do need to appreciate some of the past things that you've done in your life, but I really have been focusing on taking it one day at a time, making, and I'm sure you probably agree with it too, but making sure that you really reset every day that you don't look back and perhaps some of the mistakes you did and just look at the day and try to make the most of that day, that hour and set yourself objectives for that day. So that's how I kind of look at it. I don't look at anything I've done really in the past as much as I appreciate it. I just try to make the most of every day and reset. And that's been something, especially recently, that's helped me a lot in my life. And to be able to achieve the hard things that you do need to do one step at a time rather than look at the whole picture, which could be overwhelming. Yeah. So that's one strategy for sure in in how you're handling moving forward with your day to day with certain tasks and looking into the future. Right. So can we maybe take a step back and talk about when you were in your third or fourth year in undergrad and you were starting to think about applying to graduate schools, you were trying to you were starting to think about applying to master's programs. How did you feel once you realized that you wanted to apply? It was overwhelming because I had no idea where I wanted to go. And there was a lot of different schools that offered similar programs or slightly different programs. So it was a bit overwhelming because I knew that there'd be a lot of requirements in the application process. And I honestly didn't know where to go. And I didn't know what the experience would be once I went to the universities. So obviously, I tried to gather as much information as possible about the programs and such. And that was definitely a, a difficult process. So yeah, it was it was a bit overwhelming, but at the same time, it was a bit exciting knowing that I'd be doing something new after four years of undergrad. So it was exciting, but also a little bit overwhelming at the same time. And it wasn't a straightforward process, right? Remember all those requirements that we worked through? How did you feel about all those requirements and meeting them before we started to work together? Well, it was a bit intimidating just because... I didn't know exactly how to format the specific requirements. I didn't know how to put them into words. I didn't know how to put them in words that made it look professional. So that was extremely important was to be able to put, to present your application in a way that looked professional and really had that type of formatting that I didn't know how to do. There, there were different parts of it, just to be specific, autobiographical sketches or CVs, letters of intent that you had to write for every school. And doing, you know, each one of those was was challenging and, and required a step by step process, a step by step process that we that that I think you realized sort of like the second we got started, how reflective the process was. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah, yes, I do remember it. You have to look basically at everything you've done and try to find out what you've actually done and see how it's important. And you actually helped me with that a lot because we talked about this before. I had studied French and that was a really big part of my life at the time was studying French or Quebec politics, which was quite unique. And I had learned French in my first year of university from being in Quebec. So I really leaned on the French learning aspect or the fact that I learned this language once you told me about it, because I didn't know if it would be important. And you said, yeah, that's kind of you know, unique, the fact that you can speak French, that you learned it and that you know about Quebec politics. So that's definitely something that I used in my application that I might not have done had I not talked to you. 
Yeah. And I remember, so I remember sitting there. So like, let's just paint a picture here. I remember sitting there. You're sitting beside me. We're both sitting with our laptops and you are, this is of course, before we moved into the office space. That's how, that's how we've been working together even before the office space. And we were sitting there and I, what I, part of my process in the one-to-one sessions is really having very in-depth, reflective conversations with you in order to figure out exactly what you've done, where you're going, what your experiences are, why you want to get where it is that you want to get, why you want to apply here and what you want to do with it. And I just remember that you said, oh, yeah, I speak French. And I was like, "Okay, well, it's not on your resume. It's nowhere here. Where like, where is this? This is so important. And then as we discussed the fact that you speak French, you're bilingual more and more. All of this other experience came out like you had certificates in French. You had actual certifications in the language. You had attended programs in order to receive those certificates. You traveled. You lived somewhere else while you were doing those certificates. And none of that was was there. And so I just remember sitting there and having this conversation and you realizing that you actually have done really valuable things. They just weren't written down. Yeah, no, for sure. It was, like I said, it wasn't something that I knew would be important or know how to present it in a way that would look. It's relevant information. Yeah, I mean, I I did learn about politics or I learned how to speak French by reading articles in Quebec newspapers online. That's basically the way I got into it, which is kind of a unique way. And it was obviously relevant for applying to a type of degree related to political science. So being able to present that and showing to people, you know, why this is important to me and why this would be make me a unique applicant, which I believe it did, was really important. Yes. And it absolutely did make you a unique applicant and you got in. Yeah. Right. Like, hooray, you got in to the program that you wanted to get into by focusing on your skills, your attributes, your experiences, your value that you brought to the program. Yeah. And so once we were able to pull out that experience, how did your perception of the application process shift? Well, it made me a lot more confident in the application itself and the fact that I presented, I was presenting myself in kind of a unique way because there, there was strengths in my applications, but there were weaknesses. So I really want to, I really want to stress these strengths, like the French part. And that was very important to actually discover that and discover that that was something that was important to present. So I felt more confident. And then also my application basically revolved around that unique aspect and it gave my application some direction that otherwise it wouldn't have had previously. It made it unique. So that was that was very important. One of the unique parts was that the fact that you had this bilingual skill and this experience was directly related to the work that you wanted to do. Yeah, it was. It it was directly related to it. Definitely politics. It's useful to be using French. And it's definitely something that I want to be using in the future, the French aspect. I currently don't do it right now. But to be able to work, especially for the federal government or to work in a provincial government where French is definitely necessary, it's super useful. And whenever I tell people who work in politics that I speak French, they're quite interested about that. So they they people recognize that's something that's really important because there are not a lot of people in Ontario, Anglophones that speak both languages. So, yes, that it is important. Yes. And so can you I just I love the your experience in Quebec. And I think that this might be getting off topic a little bit, but I just love how you developed this skill. You lived with with the family in Quebec for some time, right? Oh, yes. Yes, I did. Yes. Could you I just lived. tell a little bit of that story? Because I just love it. It's a crazy story. It's a crazy story because it was at the end of first year. I had no idea what I was going to be doing for the summer. And I was attending this French literature class. And this teacher was like, oh, you should apply to this program. And I did. And I just ended up being accepted for this bursary for a place called Chicoutimi to study French at the University of Quebec at Chicoutimi, which is 10 hours north of Toronto. And it's two hours north of Quebec City. So that gives you an idea of how far it was. 
And I did this program. I loved it so much the first year that I did it for three years in a row. And I stayed with several Quebec families. And right now I'm still very close to both of those families that I was with. I'm actually going to go back and stay with them this summer. I stayed with them for four months in 2020 when I was working remotely. So it, it hugely impacted my life. Like it, it, it very, it made me want to travel. It made me want to explore different cultures. It, it made me understand Canada a lot more. And it was just such a fulfilling experience to do. It's something that I still love to this day and I love going back there. So definitely important for me. For sure. And just to think back that it wasn't included anywhere in writing, (laughs) (laughs) right? Like looking back now, it's just so mind blowing that such a formative experience. And, but the, the thing is, and the thing that I want to draw out of this example here is that so many people have so much experience and do so many valuable things, but it's not on paper anywhere. So this is part of the, the work that we do is actually recognizing the value that you bring, recognizing exactly everything you bring to the table, the value that you bring your experience, recognizing that it's a part of your narrative of who you are and the fact that we were able to really pull that out. And now it is, it's continued to be a part of your story is just so, so wonderful. So let's move on to talking about actually working together. So when we started in our one-on-one sessions, I think way back, how did you feel when we first started versus when we completed our work together? Well, it was comfortable right away to be, to be frank, Adrian, you're very professional. You were, you knew, it seemed like you knew exactly what you were doing and you did obviously, and you were just great to work with, easy to talk to. You knew what to get out of me, which is basically understanding what I want to do and what my background was and how to put that into words and how to format that properly. And at the end of the process, I guess I was just confident with the applications. I was happy with the results. So, but from the very beginning, it was just easy to work with you. (laughs) I'm happy to hear that. It was, it was, it look, it was, it, the application process, it could be extremely intimidating and it could be, you know, not exactly the most exciting thing, but it was fun to work with you. You were, you made it a good process and something that you could actually look forward to because it was exciting. You learned a lot about yourself and you were doing something that was difficult, but it was fulfilling. So, and you put in the hard work, like you put in that hard work from one session to the next. And so we, we had a lot to work with and that was wonderful. So can you maybe describe what actually sitting together, working together looked like? What the back and forth was like? Can you maybe just recount some of your your reflections on on what it was like to actually work together one on one in the moment? Well, specifically, you brought your laptop. I brought my laptop. We I know this is when we two... were still, when I was still yeah. doing house calls. <laughs> so we just had two laptops open, and basically, I would have already written a draft of a letter of intent, and also, I guess, worked a bit on an, an autobiography or CV. But the letter of intent was the main thing. You look at it at the same time. I presented it to you, and you made uh, certain edits that made it better or, and you, you told me like, how does this look? This is, and and when you made the edits, it wasn't just like you were just doing them. You're telling me why exactly the edits were important, why this would look better for an application. And you're just suggesting things to me and explaining exactly step by step why you made certain modifications. So it wasn't just like I was handing you my letters of intent and saying, okay, you fix this. It was more like a collaborative process throughout the whole thing. So that was super important because I, I felt like I was part of it, you know, as much as you were. So it, it was, it was very important for me to understand why you were making those changes. And you explained that really well. We really focused on skills development because you've just completed another application process. Yes. Tell me about how you were able to apply the skills that we developed together to actually working on your own, because that's amazing. It was an extremely intimidating process, very difficult, but it did help me to have that background because firstly, I had confidence that I could do it because I had done it before in the past with you. So that gave me a huge confidence boost, knowing that it is something that's possible and not something that's theoretical. And secondly, I did use some of the phrasing, some of the formatting that you that you helped me with in this application. So it was really important to know what 
some of these people on the other side were looking for. And you'd help me to do that by working with me on those other applications. But it's, it's still never, uh, it's still never an easy process to do an application. For me, it's, it's a little bit nerve wracking, but knowing that I had done it before at least made me confident that it was possible. Yes. You had the system down. You had the skills down. You had our work from before. You had everything. You had your perfected resume and CV, which you could translate into your autobiographical sketch. Everything was you, you really continued to build on, on the foundation that we laid for you. Exactly. That's exactly what happened. So I'm so happy to hear that. I'm so happy to hear that the skills that we learned together have carried forward and that you've been able to apply them on your own. That's like such a win. Yes, it was a win. It was a win to, to work on it and to finally be done it and to send it off and just let it go. But definitely learned a lot from the process that we had together and. It helped me a lot in this application process, which was very difficult to do. Yes. Yes. No, you you won't get any disagreement from me on that point. <laughs> application processes are hard. They're really hard and they require so much reflective and mindful work that so many applicants miss. So maybe could you actually just speak about for a moment how important the reflective and mindful components are of the process, because that's work that that is sort of intangible. You have to really think about what you've done previously in your life and how to tell a story of yourself that makes your application interesting. I, at least that's what I think. You have to be able to tell a story and that really requires you to think, OK, what have you done previously in your life that could go into this application? What's an interesting story? about, for example, politics and your passion for politics and your passion for French that goes into into your application. Like for me, for example, I was thinking about it in this last application and I was just sitting there thinking like for, for it was tough. It was like looking at a blank piece of paper and I thought, okay, I had done something in 2019 when I was working in an internship at Queens Park. I'd attended this meeting between it was a French human trafficking organization or an organization against human trafficking to be more specific that focused on francophone speakers and several members of the provincial parliament. And my responsibility in that meeting was to just translate it from French to English and to transcribe that. And so I explained in my application, hey, this is something listening to some of the stories that the, the people in this organization talked about really affected me and listening to them and seeing what, how perhaps the justice system doesn't necessarily address a lot of the issues that they have really affected me and really gave a feeling like I needed to do something in the justice system to, to change things. So that was something that I have just, I just sat there and I thought about that. I never thought about that experience before until I had. I had been I had been sitting there with my application. So that was something that was really integral to to my application. And it's just stories like that you have done in your past that you can you really need to be able to tell something I think that's engaging and that really does affect you and that can make people understand your motivation for wanting to go to a new university or to do whatever you wanted to do. Thank you for sharing that. And I think the fact that you clearly have developed the skill to be able to pinpoint those experiences and think to yourself, okay, this is one of the stories I'm going to tell, or this is one of the experiences that I'm going to draw on. That takes skill to be able to identify an experience and then implement it in an application. That takes skill. So I'm like, so, so happy that you found that experience and that you were able to, to apply it. Yes. I was able to apply it, Adrian. It was very useful to sit with you before. And it is something that you have to learn and you have to, you have to have something, in my opinion, you have to be able to tell a story and have a certain direction of your application. That story can help basically mold that application together. And that's what really helped me was I was just missing that little ingredient, that personal thing, that motivation to show people, Hey, why is it important to me? And that story that I was able to tell from my personal experience was really important to give my application a sense of direction and a sense of showing people what my 
intention was because it was a letter of intention. So I had to, you have to, I guess, really show people how, why you want to do things and you have to do it in an engaging way. And I think it was, it made my application or at least my letter of intent a lot better than it had been previously. For sure. And I think that speaks to something that I, that I think is so important and that I inform all of my work with is, which is that your application should be non-transferable. And what I mean by that is your application should be so unique to you that somebody else wouldn't necessarily resonate with what resonated with you. And that's what makes an application unique to somebody is that it is inherently non-transferable. We move beyond the surface. We get really deep. We dig deep and we figure out what is motivating you? What is the reason that you're here? What is the, what is the impact that you want to have? And ultimately, what is it? What kind of work do you want to do? What kind of life do you want to have? What kind of life do you want to build for yourself? What kind of opportunities do you want to open the door to for yourself? And how do you want to feel fulfilled and what will make you feel fulfilled in the long term in your continued advancement? And all of that gets filtered implicitly into an application. And so I think that the story that you've just provided, that you've just shared, really helps us to understand how non-transferable your content would be. Like if we superimposed your application onto somebody else, we we couldn't do it, right? Yeah. We couldn't do it. And that's the goal. And what I see often on admissions committees and what I've seen on admissions and job search committees is that so many applications are so surface level because people haven't done that thoughtful, mindful work that you could literally take someone's application and it could be anyone's application. But the example that you've just shared helps us to understand so clearly that your application was your applications, plural, have been so unique to you that they are non-transferable to others. So I just wanted to thank you for sharing that. Thank you. There is no way. I, I didn't even think about the fact that people could send in like this cookie cutter application that doesn't tell anything. Like there's no way that my application wouldn't have a story or something to it because I really want people to remember me after, regardless of if they accept me or not. But if they do accept me, they'll know who I am and they'll know that I bring something different. And that's basically what I want to do is to make sure that people know that I have something to bring and that there's a story behind me. I'm not perfect. I have my, I've made mistakes. I've had ups and downs and I have a whole unique history, but I want people to remember that and not to just, okay, let's go to the next application. That's not something important. So I can't even imagine people just sending in something that's superficial. I'm sure it's, the reason why is because it's much more difficult uh, when you go into depth because you really do have to think about it. And that last round was really difficult. And the one that I did with you was difficult process. But that's what's required, I think, I hope, in order to get into universities. So, yeah, that's what I add to that. It is. It is. And as you're sharing this, I literally have goosebumps because you are I've just see I just see such a transformation. I just see such a transformation and you're so confident. And I think that it's so important that you're confident in yourself and in your work. And if I can reflect for a moment, when we started working together, your posture was a little bit different. Your your tone was a little bit different. You've grown a lot. And so I just wanted to give you real kudos for that. You know, we can't all be confident every day. That's not the way confidence works, right? <laughs> Even for for anybody, for me, for whoever, for professionals, nobody's confident every day. But I think that when we are comfortable with where we are and we're, we know that there's a direction that we're following and we're confident in our skills and our experience and what we bring to the table, which you have grown to be, I think that this can change everything. It can change your trajectory. It can change the opportunity that you see for yourself. Because sometimes when we feel afraid and timid and, you know, we have a fear of failure, we're stressed out, we're anxious, we don't see opportunities in the same way. And so now what I'm seeing is just this, I, I see that you see opportunity for yourself. And that's so wonderful for me to see. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's just a work in progress every day. And like I said, I'm not perfect, but I gain confidence by 
putting in the work every day and by feeling like I have a sense of direction, but also doing the little things every day and improving myself every day and making sure that I'm disciplined and consistent. And I don't always do it. I don't always succeed. But right now it's something that I consciously try to do. And I think that gives me a lot of confidence and also working with good people every day. When you're surrounded by good people and people that do want to help you and do want to make you a better person, it helps you so much more than when you're working alone. And I know this is a, a different topic, but you know, working remotely, it has its advantages, but really being with people every day and with good people, or at least three days a week, I think it's extremely important for your own character development, for being more confident and just being a better person. So it's really important to surround yourself with good people who want to make sure that you succeed and also doing the little things every day, the hard work and have, and you'll get confidence in that. And that's something that I try to work on. And it's Oh, a work in progress. So I'm, I appreciate that you said that. That's really nice of you to say, but it's also something that I try to work on every day as well. Mm -hmm. And it's, I, I like what you said that, you know, you're not perfect, but you have discipline, right? And I think that something really important to pull out is that it's actually, and I feel the same way. It's not about perfection. It's about consistency. That's the discipline part. The discipline that keeps you coming back, doing the hard work consistently in order so that you can continue to advance and continue to succeed in a way that you choose, right? Based on your own, your own expectations for yourself, your own standards for yourself, your own desires for what it is that you want and not anyone else's. And I right. think that that's so important. Absolutely. If you have to have standards for yourself and when you meet the standards for yourself and it could be waking up early and going to the gym reading a little bit every day when you meet those standards you do feel a lot more confident in yourself and that's something that's really important for me is doing the little things every day and trying to be consistent and having that discipline and that gives me a ton of more more confidence because i know that i can trust myself and being able to trust yourself is so important for how you carry yourself to the rest of the world. Absolutely. I think that's such important insight to share. So taking a step back to when we work together, can you recall what it was like? Because we had our, our live sessions, which most of the time were in person, although you were away at school for some of the sessions that we had. And so we had some sessions virtually. So can you recall what it was like to take the conversation and the learnings that we had together, the skills development that we worked on together during our live sessions and implementing that on your own before our next session. Can you tell me a bit about what you remember from that process and, and your experience going through that process of implementing the skills development work and implementing the the work that we were doing live in your independent work before meeting again? Sure. So after every session, what you did was you set out sort of a goal to do for the next week. And I guess that's, that's what I did. You'd say, you'd say, work on your letter of intent, do this, add more things to your CV. And so we'd work on, maybe we had 10 sessions together or something like that. But between every session, I worked a little bit in between and then you'd review what I had done. So it was always, it was just a process where you added on every week. And then by adding on 10% or, or so every week, you came up with a really good application, we'd always be, you'd always be asking me to do something, not exactly something huge, something that would take a few hours. And then when I was with you, we just polish it and make it look a lot better. So I felt really good the next, after every time I, I met you or before I met you for the next time, because I knew I had done something small or big towards the completion of my application. So that made the sessions a lot more fulfilling because I was always working on something in between every week and slowly building this application for several universities that took time, but we were making progress and that was important. Yes. And I, and I really like that you said that sometimes it didn't take a lot of time because I think that part of the struggle that many applicants have, including myself, when I was applying to programs and when I was applying to jobs and firms and, and wherever I was applying was that things would take so much longer because I didn't have the guidance. And it's the same with other applicants before they come work with me too. They spend months and months and months and months, days and days and days working on this like one little piece. And then we can work together 
and really distill what it is that you have to do and focus a lot more quickly and provide guidance so that we save time, we save mental energy, and you can sleep at night without having those knots in your stomach about, oh crap, I have to work on this again tomorrow. <laughs> and you have a direction. So I think that it's so important that you you raise that, that some of the things that we were working on and that you were working on between sessions were big and some were small and some took less time than others, but time was obviously saved by just having the direction. Yeah, it doesn't take that that long, really. It yeah. does take long if you do it in a one day and it won't probably won't be very good. But if you do break it up into smaller parts, you write a letter of intent, the draft of it, and then you review it after you write it. And, and it might not be perfect and definitely isn't perfect, but you work, I work on it with you and you can show me, here's what you need to improve on. Here's what you need to add. And then you add over it over time. You make a little edits on it over time, but it's not really difficult. It's just, you just have to go in there and actually write something and then you can make the edits after. And the same thing with the CV, you can work on it, you know, day by day and have certain objectives for the week. Like I'll do all, I'll write down, you know, all the jobs that I did or some of the academic achievements I did this week. And then you review it. And it's really not that difficult. But the important thing is to actually initially make that first step. And then you'll feel a lot more confident. Hey, I actually have something. There's something I can work with. And I know that there's somebody that's going to be giving me guidance and saying, here's what you need to improve on. So you don't need to be thinking every day, hey, is this perfect or not? You wrote something. And then you have somebody that helps you out and makes it a lot better. So that definitely saved me a lot of time. But most importantly, it was being confident and knowing that this is the best application I can present. And that's really important. And that just gives you a lot of peace of mind. For sure. For sure. And so just on the point of being confident in your application, can you just tell me a bit about why you felt confident in your application? Like what what caused you to feel that confidence? The reason why I was so confident was because I knew I knew I ended up telling my story in a compelling way. And I knew I couldn't present that story in a better way. I, I really felt like I did as much as I could. You helped me as much as as was possible to tell the world or at least these admissions committees why I was unique and and who I was. And we did it in a way that was readable and interesting and exciting, hopefully. So I that's why I felt really confident about it afterwards. And the same thing with the CV, you helped a lot with formatting it, making it look a lot better. And that's why I felt really good, because if I didn't have that help, I wouldn't have known how to do it. I mean, I guess I would have done something from like a Google template, which definitely wouldn't have looked as professional. So the way that you did it, making it look really good and phrasing all the sentences really well, really helped save a lot of time. And also I knew was good because after reading it and reading what I had beforehand, it just was night and day difference. So you only have 800 or so words or 500 words to do some of these letters of intent, not a lot of space. So you really have to make the best use of that space to be able to write a good letter. And that's what you helped me do. And that's why I felt so good about it at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So how has the way that you see yourself changed from before we started working together to after? Well, I was able to reflect a lot on what I had done previously in my life. So that was really important was to know what I had done until that point. And there were some achievements that maybe I didn't look as 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 important as perhaps they were. So so that helped a lot. And knowing that I had achieved this thing, which is this application process, which was very difficult, I just felt a lot, a lot more confident that, hey, like I achieved something hard and That's basically what happens when you do something difficult is that you feel a lot better about yourself because you had to overcome that difficulty. And perhaps you want to quit at some point, but you went past that and you overcame that. And that's what makes you more confident. So every time I do something like that, and especially for the applications, because there were several applications and a lot of requirements for it, it was really difficult. So after all that was done, I did feel good about myself and that helped. But it, it, you know, beyond that, it, it is something that you have to work on every day. It was important, but I, every day you do have to work on that to be able to have that confidence because confidence has to be maintained by consistent work. It's not just a one-time thing, but yes. it did help me a lot. 
Wonderful. So that leads perfectly into the question of what did you learn through our work together, both about applications and about yourself? I didn't know anything about applications really before the whole process. From under, from high school to undergrad, it's so much easier. You just send in your high school grades and maybe they ask you to write two paragraphs about something depending on the program. But it's usually quite easy to do, at least when I did it. I don't know if it's still the same. That was about 10 years ago. I learned a lot about the whole applications process, what people are looking for, how to basically tell an engaging story and why it's so important, and to show to the admissions committees why you want to be in that program. It's really important to tell them the why or show them the why. And I learned a lot about myself and what my story was and how I could look back at my life and the narrative of my life. I basically was able to create that through this whole applications process and and to really reflect and look back. And I hadn't necessarily done that before in that way, or at least as thoroughly as I had done that with this application. So that really helped me understand where I had gone and where I could be going as a result of the actions I had done in the past. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. And so final question, what advice would you give your younger self? I definitely say you should go out there and do it. You know, like the whole Nike (laughs) branding, just do it, just do it, but also just do it, but stick with it. I think being consistent and there will be difficulties. Like, for example, you go to a debate club and you go to the first competition or mock competition that you have and you you end up being the worst debater i think and that happens that happens but you know you like debating you know you that's something that you could be skilled at one day but perhaps you give up and you should never really give up on stuff like that especially when you know you could be good on it so i'd say keep on going keep on attending those debates you know for for that example or do whatever you want to do even if there are certain, you know, things that happen that are, that could be discouraging, overcome that and be consistent. And that's how you'll build your skills over time. And that's how you'll be more confident in yourself because you know, you had, you had gone through these difficulties. So I'd say just do it and keep on doing it. That's basically the advice I'd give myself. Thank you. I think that that is such important advice to hear. And I think it applies to everyone, not just students, right? We never stop going through difficult, challenging situations in life. And so I think that that advice to just keep going and to set your goals and to make those steps along the way toward those goals by always asking yourself, what is the next best step is the is one of the ways to break down that that big, challenging situation into more manageable pieces. So I really appreciate that advice. Just just do it and just keep going. Thank you so much, Josh. Thank you very much, Adrian. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am so grateful that Josh has joined us today. And I hope that you have all been able to learn about Josh's experience and the growth that continues in all of our lives. Thank you so much. See you next time. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at applyyourselfglobal and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.